All right, I'm working on a 2011 Ford Fiesta um, overheating problem. So I wasn't going to make a video, but I decided to go ahead and make one just to help somebody out. Um, what to look for. Uh, basically, the car was overheating. It's been in the 90s for about two weeks straight. Uh, it's my daughter's car, and uh, she called me up said it was smoke coming out of the motor. So, of course, you think worst case scenario, you know, the motor blew or there's no oil or whatever. But uh, long story short, if you see this hose right here, comes off your reservoir, your coolant reservoir. I had to repair once already. And then that plastic line goes around and down to there. Anyhow, um, it was squirting out of here. Whoever repaired this before we bought it didn't put clamps on it, so I put clamps on it, thought I was good. Um, and then it blew a little bit further down, so I had to slide the hose down. So then I started looking for um, something that was causing it to overheat, and I noticed that the fan wasn't turning on. Um, so yeah, one of the first things you're going to want to do if you have that situation, again, is to check to see if the fan's running. Um, the easiest way to do that, to make sure that the fan is being called to be on, is uh, to turn on your air conditioning. Uh, when you start the car and you're letting it warm up, uh, the fan won't necessarily come on uh, right away. It, it waits to a certain temperature, uh, usually between 190 to 200 degrees is when the the fan will come on but if you want to force the fan on uh, just turn your air conditioning on high and um, most cars and and definitely on this this car here that's supposed to force the fan on immediately as soon as you turn the AC on all right so I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, new one put in place uh, like I said I didn't decide to make a video until after I had the old one out so I'm just gonna show you real quick um, what I did to get it out um, what I think is the the easiest way Basically, you got two clips on the bottom and two clips up on the top. You can see the new one has the same exact clips. So, originally, I was going to try to take it out of the top, and I think that's the way probably most people would approach it. But you would have to contend with the upper radiator hose. That would have to come off. Uh, I'm pretty sure you'd have to take this air box out. Um, this guy's probably going to end up in your way. Um, you got a few other things to contend with too. You got dipstick, which will come out easily, but um, it just looked like it was going to be harder than it needed to be. So, if you have ramps, get the cars up on ramps. All right, so you're going to be underneath the car to do this. You're going to have to be up on uh, car ramps, and you're definitely going to have to remove your lower radiator hose. I clamped it off to save some of the fluid. Um, you're definitely going to lose what was in the radiator, so be ready for that. Uh, get a pan or something to catch it. And then take your wiring harness that's hooked to the uh, fan shroud. There's about three places that it's attached. Uh, just pull those clips out. And then that's your your clip that clips into the, into the fan. You just take this guy right here. There's a little lever in there. I'll call it, pull back on that and then that'll loosen right up and that'll pull out of your old uh, fan shroud. So once you got that done, now you're ready to remove the whole uh, fan shroud. It's connected here at the bottom and connected there at the bottom. And then you got your two spots up on top. So up on top, you wanna loosen them first, get them broken free, and then get underneath here. And uh, it was definitely a little bit tough, but get a screwdriver and kind of work on them a little bit and then eventually the whole thing will come loose and it pulls right out of the bottom um, the only thing that's really in your way again is the radiator hose but once you have that removed and out of your way it just slid right out um, and again if you had to try to get that out through the top um, you could do it I believe but I, I think it would be uh, twice as much work so if you have a set of ramps um, this is the way to do the, you know to do it all right, so push your new fan assembly up into place. You still got everything loose here. And you're gonna to wanna to get your bottom tabs in first. I'm not in there yet, but basically, you wanna push it up into place. And now we're gonna finagle these bottom ones in place and then give it a little pull down. That should snap in place. And then we'll go up top and we'll, we'll snap those in place.
this is your one of your top tabs that'll lock right in place your second one is underneath this piece right here so it's a little tough to get at but let's get your hand underneath there same thing snap that guy in place make sure you go ahead and take your wiring harness and your new one if you bought a you know direct replacement one you should have the if I can get it on the camera you should have the holes to snap those back in so go ahead and work your way down and make sure they're all in place you don't want that getting wrapped up in the fan Trying to do this one-handed. So just go ahead and take your harness and that'll snap back into place. Um, again, the one that I have, uh, it's a, a direct replacement, but the other one, the original had the, the connection was just right underneath the fan motor. This one here has got a little bit of an extension, uh, but again, it plugs right in. The only thing I would recommend, I'm gonna find a wire tie and try to tie that off somewhere because it had excess wire but that's it once this guy's plugged in again make sure your wiring harness is snappy and uh, now All right, so at this point we're all hooked back up. Uh, we've got our radiator hoses hooked back up, wiring harnesses back in place. Um, so now you want to go ahead and check your fluid level. Um, more than likely you're going to be low because you lost what you had in your radiator. That's your minimum line and that's your maximum line. So go ahead and get that up to the maximum line and uh, then you can go ahead and test it and we're going to see if this fan works. All right, so I'm ready to test this guy now. I'm going to start it up, uh, put the air conditioning on high, and then uh, we'll take a peek in here and we'll see if that fan's moving. Um, so just a quick recap. Uh, basically, if you're having overheating problems um, and you notice your fan's not coming on, you know, again, test it by putting your air conditioning on high. That should force that fan on. Um, you know, don't go sticking your fingers in there for obvious reasons, but just see if that's spinning. If it's not... Uh, chances are you either have a blown fuse or a bad relay. Uh, I would check them first. Look in your owner's manual. It'll show you where the locations are. You have one fuse box underneath the hood of your car, and you have one inside the car behind the glove box. You actually have to pull the glove box open and then kind of extend it open even further, and there's a fuse box behind there. So you may want to check them first uh, before you get involved in the fan. Um, but pretty much... In my situation, obviously, it was the fan, but it could be the fuse, could be a relay. Uh, relays don't go bad too often, uh, and usually if a fuse blows, it's for a reason. So, I'm going to go ahead and test it and see what happens. So that's it. She's up and running. Uh, fans running good. Uh, car's staying cool now. So uh, hope that helped somebody. Sorry for the quick and dirty video. Um, like I said, I didn't really plan on making a video, so I didn't have my tripod or anything. But hopefully that gives you the gist anyway. Um, hope it helped.